Hey guys, this is the Clear English Corner, and I'm Keenan, your personal American English pronunciation coach. A few weeks ago, one of my students sent me an email. He was getting ready to present his research for his doctoral dissertation, and he was working on his introduction. In a few quick sentences, he talked about being very happy, very thankful, very lucky, and very excited. He was trying to convey some significant emotions, but by using very over and over, the effect was redundant. And the same thing happens with the word really. And if you're not careful, you can end up sounding less animated and interesting than you actually are. I'm definitely not saying that you should never use these words, but I want you to be able to incorporate some variety, especially if you're preparing a presentation. So in this lesson, we're learning descriptive words to use in place of really and very phrases. We'll also practice using these words in sentences with an extra emphasis on using contractions to help you sound more natural. Sound like a plan? Let's dive in. All right, so instead of saying you're very happy or really excited, try using the words thrilled or delighted. I'm delighted to be here. Notice how I am becomes I'm, I'm. I'm delighted to be here. I'm delighted to be here. She's thrilled with her new place. She is becomes she's, she's, with that z consonant sound for our apostrophe s, since e is a vowel sound and voiced. She's, she's. She's thrilled with her new place. She's thrilled with her new place. Instead of very sad, try heartbroken, heartbroken. We're heartbroken about it. Notice how we are becomes were, were. Not even we're, it reduces all the way down to were, were. We're heartbroken about it. We're heartbroken about it. Instead of very lucky, try fortunate, fortunate. I'm fortunate to be part of such a forward-thinking organization. Notice how I am, again, I'm, I'm. I'm fortunate, I'm fortunate. I'm fortunate to be part of such a forward-thinking organization. I'm fortunate to be part of such a forward-thinking organization. Instead of very thankful, try grateful, grateful. We're grateful for the opportunity. We're grateful for the opportunity. Again, notice we are is becoming were, were, like it was spelled W-E-R-E, were, were. We're grateful, we're grateful. We're grateful for the opportunity. Instead of saying something is really or very good, try the words exceptional or phenomenal. I know, great words, right? Exceptional, phenomenal. It was an exceptional performance. It was an exceptional performance. We had phenomenal seats. We had phenomenal seats. Instead of very bad, try awful, awful, or horrible, horrible. This tastes awful. This tastes awful. He's a horrible cook. He's a horrible cook. Notice how he is becomes he's. He's, again with that z, z consonant for our apostrophe S. He's, he's a, he's a horrible cook. Instead of very dirty, try filthy, filthy. This place is filthy. This place is filthy. For really or very clean, you can use spotless, spotless. Her apartment's always spotless. Her apartment's always spotless. Apartment is become apartments, apartments. Her apartment's always spotless. Her apartment's always, always. Notice too how the S sound is linking in front of the word always, making it sound like always, always. Her apartment's always spotless. Instead of very funny, try hilarious, hilarious. You're hilarious. You are becomes your, your, not even your, your, your. You're hilarious. You're hilarious. For really or very pretty, try gorgeous, gorgeous. 
that's a gorgeous dress. That is becomes that's, that's, and that's a comes really quick. That's a, that's a, that's a gorgeous dress. That's a gorgeous dress. Instead of very ugly, try hideous, hideous. Those are hideous curtains. Notice how those are becomes those are, those are. Now you're not going to see this written as a contraction with an apostrophe R E, but that word R is reducing to er, er, those are. Those are hideous curtains. Those are hideous curtains. If something is really interesting, try describing it as intriguing or compelling. It's an intriguing article. It is becomes it's, it's, and the word and becomes n, n, n. It's an, it's an, it's an intriguing article. That's a compelling argument. That is, that's, that's, that's a, that's a. Again, that S linking over in front of a uh, there. Do you hear it? Making it sound like sa, sa, that's a. That's a compelling argument. If something is very big, try using the words massive or tremendous. They've built a massive house out in the country. They have becomes they've, they've. They've built a massive house out in the country. We've had tremendous success with this. We have becomes we've, we've. We've had, we've had. We've had tremendous success with this. If something is very small, try using the word tiny, tiny. It's a tiny change that makes a massive impact. It is becomes it's, it's, it's a, it's a. It's a tiny change that makes a massive impact. This is a fun one. Instead of really hot, try stifling, stifling. It's stifling in here. It is, it's, it's, it's stifling, it's stifling. And notice how the S in our contraction, it's, is linking right over into the S at the beginning of stifling. The sound is continuing from the end of it's into stifling. It's stifling. It's stifling. It's stifling in here. Side note, you can't use stifling to describe a person as very hot. You can't say he's so stifling or she's really stifling. Good to know, right? That would have a really different meaning, meaning the person is like oppressive and maybe overly clingy. Instead of very cold, you could say freezing, freezing. I'd rather it be freezing than stifling. I would becomes I'd, I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather. I'd rather it be freezing than stifling. Very mad. Instead of really or very mad, try furious or livid. He's furious about it. Again, he is becomes he's, he's. He's furious. He's furious. And notice too, about it, about it. That final T at the end of about becomes a flap T, sounds like a quick D, and then links over in front of the word it, making it sound like dit, dit. About it, about it. He's furious about it. I'm livid. I am becomes I'm, I'm. I'm livid. Instead of very busy, try slammed, slammed. We're slammed this week at work. We're slammed this week at work. Again, we are becoming were, were. We're slammed, we're slammed. We're slammed this week at work. If something is really or very important, try the words critical and crucial. It's crucial that you understand this. It is becomes it's, it's, it's crucial. It's crucial. It's crucial that you understand this. It's a critical concept. Again, it is, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, sa, sa, it's a. It's a critical concept. And finally, if you're really or very tired, try the words exhausted or the phrase worn out, worn out. I'm completely exhausted. I'm completely exhausted. I am becoming I'm, I'm, I'm completely, I'm completely exhausted. 
the word completely adding even extra emphasis to exhausted. He's totally worn out. He is, again, he's, he's, he's totally. And listen to that word totally. Notice how that second T is becoming a flap T. Totally, totally, totally. He's totally worn out. So there you have it, 20 plus descriptive words that you can use instead of really and very so that you can sound more fluent and engaging and avoid sounding redundant. Be sure to visit the Clear English Corner website for a list of all the practice words and sentences used in this lesson. I have a link for you in the video description. And that's all for now. As always, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you next time.